It says Raymond Wilson, facing the facts. This is my story. For the last few weeks we've been going through scriptures and going through different phases of our ministry in the last 40 years or so. And today we're at Gloucester Baptist Church. This we're calling, this is my story about graduation, uh, which brought about satisfaction through the years and brought me to a place where I could say I've been satisfied with the work that the Lord has accomplished through us and given us the opportunity to preach throughout the course of our life. And there's several things. And I found a message that I preached in Gloucester Baptist Church uh, several years ago. I, I, uh, I think it was in uh, 2012, 2012, I believe, is when I uh, found the scripture. And I placed it to the latter part of my, my ministry at Gloucester Baptist Church. We were there from 1988 to 2013, and we left there. And since then, we've been able to preach a little on the Facebook and the radio, and, and then the church will call us from occasionally, and we were able to preach on on those occasions and so we we're satisfied with that God's used us and we do have health problems we're not able to get out like we once did but we just do praise God glorify him and lift him up and thank him for uh, allowing us to be a part of the family of God and to serve him as a pastor for those many years and for that we are so thankful today that we want to praise him and glorify him so today, this is my story about graduation from pastoring. I, I didn't graduate from pa preaching. I just graduated from pastoring because my health is just not able to keep up the pace with funeral homes and visiting and all of the duties of a pastor, and uh, my health just won't keep up with that. But we do count it a great honor that God allowed us to preach in those many years. And so uh, I've got a satisfied soul, and I want to use that today as thinking about uh, the satisfied soul that God has allowed us to have. And I found this in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 16. Psalm 16 teaches us about the uh, satisfied soul. And, of course, we have uh, the young man that's to, to preach in there and how God had used him in a great way and how God had touched him in a great way. And this is the psalm that he had uh, pinned down for us. And so we, we praise him today. Thank God for the psalms. We, we're satisfied with worshiping God and praising God and singing songs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a, what a great opportunity it is to be able to serve our Lord. And so number one, when we verse one, uh, preserve me, O God, uh, for in thee do I put my trust? And so with this, we, there's a lot in this one verse, but we're picking out the mys in this, this chapter of Psalms, and he relates to himself. And so we're using those. And so he said, my trust. And so we're thinking about we're satisfied. And those that are people, a man that is satisfied, that has a satisfied soul, is one that, <laughs> excuse me, one that trusts God. And so I trusted God many years ago, and I still trust Him today. A lot of, lot of trials, a lot of troubles, a lot of things I don't understand. But even at that, I can still trust God. Sometimes I pray and ask God for things, and it works opposite and reverse from what I think it, uh, I want it to be, but it's the way God wants it to be. And that's what counts, what God wants. And so we're here to just thank Him and let Him know we trust Him with all of our heart and our mind and our soul. And we praise Him as the uh, God, the, the Maker, the, my Maker. He created us and He controls us and we're Him. And we just totally trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. Verse 2, we find a satisfied soul is one that serves God. And I want to serve God to the best of my ability all the days of my life. I want to serve God uh, till I have no more breath to serve Him, but I want to serve Him and praise Him. He said in verse 2, O oh, my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Jehovah, thou art my Lord, my goodness, extended not unto thee. So my 
the goodness of the Lord. And so God is one that we serve. And so a satisfied soul is a Christian that serves God. There's no satisfaction like serving God. Uh, the world tries to offer many things through peace and satisfaction, but you can't find peace uh, in the world. It's all about God. It's all about serving God. And that's where I found my real peace, a peace that will pass all understanding, a, a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. And so we, we find that. We, we serve God with a whole heart. We want to serve Him, and we've served Him over the years the best we could with the power of the Holy Ghost of God leading us, guiding us, and directing us. A lot of message as we preached at Sardis Baptist Church. Matter of fact, we stayed there uh, 25 years or so. And through that time, uh, there was a lot of hard messages and there was a lot of rejoicing messages and there was just always a message uh, uh, for us, whatever it might be. Well, we just took them as they come and, and they rejoiced and praised God and glorified God. If it cuts, it cuts. We just listened to it and see if we can't overcome what the problem was <coughs> and, glor <coughs> and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So a satisfied soul, not only one that trusts God, but one that serves God and we want to serve Him. Then verse 3 a satisfied soul is one that loves God and we do love him with all of our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength and we do count it a great honor that he would love us when we were unlovable running wild across this land but yet God loved us enough that he was willing to go to the old rugged cross of Calvary to shed his blood that I might have eternal life the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. And it was there that God loved us enough that he was willing to present himself a sacrifice that I might have eternal life. And for that, we can rejoice and we can say, Lord, we love you with all of our heart and our mind and our soul. And we do love God. We love the Word of God. Oh, how we love the Word of God, studying the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, musing on the Word that God has given us. And just like a love letter, a covenant of God. And so we read, <laughs> excuse me, think about, <laughs> about the love of Almighty God and how He loved us. In verse 4, a satisfied soul is one that worships God. And we surely want to worship God and lift Him up. And we had some wonderful services at Gloucester Baptist Church. Had a tremendous choir uh, at Gloucester Baptist Church. But tremendous piano players and song leaders and uh, musicians that played uh, different instruments while we were there. What a great time of, of worship and praise in God and glorifying the Son of the living God. Singing songs that will lift Him up. Songs about the blood. Power in the blood. Singing about victory in Jesus. And surely we have victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. We love to worship, and we, we worship. Had some tremendous meetings at Gloucester Baptist Church in those many years that we were there. And then in verse 5 and 6, we find a satisfied soul is one that follows God, one that stays with God. Verses, uh, uh, verses 4 and uh, verse 4, uh, Their sorrow shall be multiplied, and the hasten they see to my lips, and that's worship. Verse 5, The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup thou maintainest my lot and so here we find in five and six those that follow god and how the follow the lot of god draws our lot it came time to for me to preach the word of god and i draw a lot for a social circle then one for bethesda and then one for gloucester baptist church and for those years it was my lot to pastor that Many pastors before me did a tremendous job pastoring and, and carrying on the work of the church. And after we're gone, there'll be many more that'll come in. And if the Lord tarries his coming, there'll be many that will pastor probably this church down through the years. But it was my lot for 25 years. God sent me down there to do a job. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I did it to the best of my ability with the help of the Holy Spirit of God. A lot of people didn't like it, but that's the way it was with God. God just sent me there to do a work, to do a God. And so for that, we do praise Him. So it was my lot. And a satisfied soul is one that's doing exactly what God said for him to do, regardless of the persecution. Paul was one that worshiped God, praised God, suffered a lot of persecution. A lot of the people didn't like him. The Pharisees didn't like him. The Sadducees didn't like him. The scribes didn't like him. But he had a, a lot. He drew a lot to carry the word of God and preach to the Gentiles. And he did that. 
And God blessed him. At the end of his life, he said he fought a good fight and he's finished the course. And he had to fight with religious people, people that claimed to be uh, born again or Christian people or had religion, but they were not. And so you have to fight with those people, but thank God, he allows us to make it through. So I made it through. This was my lot to preach at Gloucester Baptist Church. And so in verses 7, we find a satisfied soul is one that listens to God. When we listen to God and listen to what he has to say. So <clears throat> listening to God's in verse 7. I will bless the Lord whom has given me a counsel, my reins, uh, also instruct me in the night season. And so God has given us instructions to follow him, listen to him. It's all about listening to what God has to say. And for that, we do thank him. And we praise Him and we glorify Him. And I just can't thank Him enough. I could just sit here all day and thank God Almighty for allowing us these many years, over 40 years of serving God. And what a tremendous trip it's been. I have gone through the trials and troubles and tribulations. But all, all through that, I've tried to listen to God. I've tried to read the Word of God and let God speak to me through the Word of God. Now, I haven't heard God's audible voice. But I speak to him, he speaks to me through the word of God. When I come before the Lord and God speaks to me, he'll speak out of the word of God. Of course, we know that the Holy Spirit, uh, he guides us, he answers us in certain ways when we pray. We hear the, have the uh, scripture that God leads us to, to know that we have the ministry of God and we have listened to God. And so we want to listen to God. Uh, the voice of God through the Word of God. And God sends preachers out. How can they hear without a preacher? And how can they hear? And how can they listen without a preacher standing to preach? The eunuch said, uh, how can I know? Oh, Philip said, uh, understand what thou readest. And he said, how can I, unless some man show me? And God has sent preacher after preacher, pastor after pastor, missionary after missionary to teach people and show them how to be saved and born in the family of God. But the Bible said they would not. And so listening to God. Verse 8, a satisfied soul is one that stays with God. Just staying with God, staying with the Word of God, staying with the things of God, so that we can lift Him up and praise Him and glorify the Lord Jesus. He talked about His right hand, holding the right hand. We sing the song, I can't even walk without Him holding my hand. And surely we won't. We want God to hold our hand and lead us. We want to listen to Him. We want to walk with Him. We want to stay with Him. And we want to lift Him up. We want to love Him. And we want to praise Him for all that He's done for us. And so I can't even walk without Him holding my hand. God said in the book of Ephesians, we are to walk in love and walk in light and walk circumspectly before this world today. So a satisfied soul is one that stays with God. Just stay with God. Uh, throughout this land, we know that we're living in some rough days, difficult days, days of apostasy. God said there'll be days of apostasy just before he comes back. And so it looks like it won't be long before the Lord will be coming back to catch his children away. So just stay with God. It might look rough. Things might not go your way, but just stay with God. Walk with God and live for God. And then verse 9 and through 11 a satisfied soul is one that looks for God. We're looking for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And surely one day he'll split that eastern sky. He'll come back and he'll catch us away. I'm longing for that day. Either through death or the catching away. Won't be long till I'll be leaving this old world. I'll, I'll leave this old world behind. I'll be able to sing that song. Goodbye world, goodbye. I'm going to leave in this whole world as soon as God gets ready for me. I'll be able to leave and I'll be able to worship him. The Bible said when we leave this world, God will give us a glorified body, a sanctified body, a body that has no blemishes and no spots in it, a church that has no spots and wrinkles in it. God will give us a brand new body and we'll bow before God in the throne of glory. God said in the book of Revelation chapter 4, uh, that we... Stand before God. He said in John chapter 4 and verse 1, he said, uh, 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 John looked up and he said he saw a door. The door. Jesus said, I am the door. And we'll walk through that door of glory. And the 24 elders, of course, the Lord will be there seated on the throne of God's glory. Elders will be there. They'll be worshiping God. 
and the angels will be there. But you and I, when we get there and join those elders, we'll bow before God and we'll sing worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Why? Because He is worthy. He's worthy because He's the one that went to the cross of Calvary. He's the one that shed the blood. He's the one that put in a tomb. He's the one that arose on that third day. He's the one that ascended back to heaven. He's the one that's now seated there on the right hand of God as a Father and He gives us the right to come before for the throne as our advocate as our intercessor and he's the one that's coming back one glorious day to catch the, the church away and then he's coming back to rule and reign on the face of this earth 1,000 years of millennial reign that God says he'll set up here on this earth I have the blessed hope I'm looking for the Lord of Jesus Christ and so he says one that searches a satisfied soul is one that looks for the Lord Jesus Christ matter of fact there's a crown for those that are looking for the Lord Jesus Christ, looking for the return of the Lord, God said he'll put a crown, a star on our crown, and we'll bow down before God. We'll take those crowns uh, and we'll worship him and praise him while the angels are crying out, holy, 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 and we're singing worthy, worthy, worthy. I trust that you're satisfied in your soul, that you know without a doubt you've been saved and born in the family of God. If not, find your place today. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you. We love you.